On February 10, 2018, Kansas City Chiefs running back Kareem Hunt was involved in a fight with a woman at a Cleveland hotel. The police were called, but ultimately no one was arrested or charged with a crime. Naturally, the Chiefs heard about the incident during the offseason, so they asked Hunt about it. We don't know exactly what Hunt told the Chiefs then, but we do know they didn't kick him off the team. So clearly, they were satisfied and it wasn't a problem. However, on November 30th, 2018, everything changed. TMZ released security camera footage of the February 10th altercation in which Hunt can be seen rushing toward, pushing, and eventually kicking a woman. TMZ's headline set the tone for media coverage of the story. It read, KC Chiefs running back Kareem Hunt brutalizes and kicks woman in hotel video. As you would expect in this day and age, everyone was outraged. And just hours after the video was released, Kareem Hunt was cut by the Chiefs and suspended by the NFL while they conducted their own investigation. And while all this was unfolding, people immediately started comparing the Kareem Hunt scandal to that of disgraced former NFL running back Ray Rice. And on the surface, there are a lot of similarities. Like Ray Rice, Kareem Hunt had been caught being violent toward a woman. And like Ray Rice, Kareem Hunt was a valuable member of a legit Super Bowl contender. And like Ray Rice, Kareem Hunt initially got off easy. And like Ray Rice, Kareem Hunt was only cut by his team and suspended by the league after everybody saw the video. And you can see why so many media pundits made the Kareem Hunt and Ray Rice connection. It was low hanging fruit right for high takes. But are the cases really that similar? No, they're not. Why? Well, we'll get to that in a few minutes. But first, if you're like me, you might even be wondering what happened to Ray Rice? In fact, some of you are probably young enough to say, who's Ray Rice again? So let's start there. Though it seems like ancient history now, Ray Rice was an elite NFL running back for four of his six seasons. He was drafted by the Baltimore Ravens in the second round of the 2008 NFL Draft, 55th overall, after completely dominating the Big East with 4,926 yards and 49 touchdowns in three seasons at Rutgers. Rice was a small guy, you know, kind of like me, officially listed as 5'9", 195 pounds, but he was an effective running back pretty much right away for the Ravens. Rice rushed for 454 yards and caught another 273 as a backup running back during his rookie season in 2008. The following year, he took the starting job from Willis McGahee and refused to give it back, rushing for 1,339 yards, catching another 702 yards, scoring eight combined touchdowns, and earning his first trip to the Pro Bowl. Over the next three seasons, from 2010 to 2012, Rice would make two more Pro Bowl appearances, averaging 1,242 yards rushing, 579 yards receiving, and 10 touchdowns per season. Oh, in that 2012 season, Rice helped the 10-6 Ravens storm through the playoffs, knocking off Andrew Luck and the Colts, Peyton Manning and the Broncos, and Tom Brady and the Patriots to reach Super Bowl 47. Then the Ravens knocked off Colin Kaepernick and the 49ers to bring Baltimore its second Vince Lombardi trophy. And during the Ravens championship run, Rice shined brightly against Denver in the divisional round. He rushed for 131 yards and a touchdown in that game, a 38-35 double overtime thriller. After helping the Ravens win the Super Bowl, Ray Rice had a down year in 2013. Though he played in 15 games, Rice was plagued by a nagging hip injury that kept him to just 660 yards on 214 carries. The only time he truly looked like himself was in a Week 10 loss to the Bears, in which he rushed for 131 yards and a touchdown. Aside from that, there was only one other game in which Rice rushed for more than 70 yards. And, of course, that was it for Ray Rice. He never played another regular season game. In February of 2014, he made an absolutely horrendous mistake. It was something so vile that it cost him his NFL career. On February 15, 2014, Ray Rice assaulted his then fiance and now wife, Janae Palmer, in an elevator at the Rebel Casino in Atlantic City, New Jersey. News of the assault was reported pretty much immediately. TMZ published a video of Ray Rice dragging Palmer out of the elevator after the incident. However, the public didn't know exactly what happened. On March 27th, a grand jury indicted Rice on third degree aggravated assault, which carries a possible prison sentence of three to five years and a fine of up to $15,000. The very next day, Rice and Palmer got married. What transpired over the next five months forever changed the way major pro sports leagues handle allegations of domestic violence. Naturally, the NFL launched an investigation into the assault, and the Ravens issued a statement calling it a serious matter. However, they also insisted there's more to Ray Rice than this one incident. 
In July of 2014, Rice struck a deal with prosecutors. The aggravated assault charge was dropped in exchange for Rice entering a diversion program, which included court-supervised counseling. After that, Ray and his wife Janae met with NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell to discuss the incident. And on July 25, 2014, Goodell handed Rice a two-game suspension. At the time, there were plenty critics who thought the NFL went too easy on Rice. The following month, August 2014, Roger Goodell admitted that he made a mistake suspending Rice for just two games. Goodell said the league would handle things differently going forward. However, everything changed when TMZ published the full security cam footage of the incident in the casino elevator, and the whole world saw how insanely vicious Ray Rice was with Janae Palmer. That grainy, choppy video showed Rice smashing his fiance in the face with a brutal left hook, knocking her head into the elevator railing and rendering her unconscious. Social media went into a frenzy immediately after TMZ published the complete security cam footage. By the end of the day, the Ravens had released Ray Rice, the guy they previously defended, while the NFL decided to suspend him indefinitely. Why the sudden change of heart on behalf of the Ravens and the NFL? Well, according to the NFL, they never saw the full elevator video, so they never knew what really happened. Roger Goodell said they asked police if they could see the video, but were turned down. Yeah. But of course, nobody bought that excuse for a second. Still though. For starters, it's hard to believe that TMZ was able to get their hands on the video, but NFL investigators weren't. And in fact, in the weeks after the full video was published, one employee of the Atlantic City Hotel said somebody from the NFL did see the video. More importantly though, the NFL didn't even need the video to know what happened inside the elevator. The official report from the Atlantic City Police Department said both parties were involved in a physical altercation. Janae had slapped Ray in the face prior to getting on the elevator. That report then went on to say Ray Rice struck Janae with his hand, rendering her unconscious. Struck Janae with his hand, rendering her unconscious. Those words together with the video of Ray Rice dragging an unconscious Janae Palmer out of the elevator should have been all the NFL needed to make a much better decision on Ray Rice's punishment. So the natural conclusion pretty much everyone came to was that the NFL went easy on Ray Rice initially simply because they thought they could. The league simply didn't want to make an example of a star player, thereby hurting a legit Super Bowl contender because the general public didn't know how terrible the elevator incident really was and because Janae stuck by her fiance. Roger Goodell and company figured they could get away with the slap on the wrist. The funny thing is, if the NFL had initially suspended Ray Rice for say, eight to 10 games and fined him like $500,000 and mandated that he get counseling for five years or so, the guy probably could have stayed in the league. The public might have been satisfied that the league had taken Rice's crime seriously and in time, might have been willing to see teams give him a second chance. After all, the woman Rice knocked unconscious married him six weeks later and insisted over and over again that he had never done anything like this before. If she could forgive him, there's a chance the public could, but only if they felt like he'd served his time and was genuinely reformed. But a two game suspension wasn't even close to being a sufficient punishment. So when the NFL and the Ravens got caught treating Ray Rice with kid gloves and suddenly had a public relations nightmare on their hands, they felt they had no choice but to go nuclear and blacklist the guy. The day after the Ravens cut Ray Rice, they announced they would let fans exchange their Ray Rice jerseys for other players. Ray Rice instantly became public enemy number one. The NFL PA filed a grievance on behalf of Rice, saying it was unfair to punish him two times for the same offense. And in November of 2014, an arbitrator threw out the NFL's indefinite suspension, meaning Rice was eligible to play football again but nobody would touch the guy. And he never so much as worked out for another NFL team. For the next few years, Ray Rice remained hopeful that somebody would give him another shot at the NFL. He stayed in tremendous shape. He did and said all the right things. He got counseling, he gave interviews in which he talked openly about his troubled past and poor decisions, things that led him astray. He always made it clear that he understood why teams didn't want to sign. But a second chance never came, and in 2016, Ray Rice admitted that his NFL career almost certainly over. However, that doesn't mean Ray Rice has been away from football. Far from it. After getting cut by the Ravens, Rice and his wife moved to Stanford, Connecticut, close to their hometown of New Rochelle, New York. A few years ago, Rice started serving as a volunteer running backs coach at his old high school. And in June of 2017, New Rochelle High officially hired him and made the arrangement permanent. New Rochelle head coach Lou Dorenzo said Rice has been a huge asset to the team. 
He says there's nobody better to motivate a kid than Ray Rice. The players relate to him because he's from where they're from, and he's been to the highest level of football and lost it all. Rice hasn't just been motivating high school kids, though. Over the last few years, he's also been speaking to college teams. Alabama, Ohio State, Notre Dame, Florida State, Western Michigan, Connecticut, Rutgers, they've all invited Ray Rice to come talk to their players about how one decision can change their lives and what it really means to be a man. Speaking at the Liberty University commencement in December of 2017, Ray Rice said that night in the elevator with his wife back in 2014 uncovered the brutal truth of his life and that he had no idea what it really meant to be a man that his priorities were out of order, that he needed to drink less, that he needed to get rid of his old self, of Ray Rice the football player, and start anew. Ray Rice and his wife Janae live a much simpler life now, one that revolves almost entirely around their two kids. Financial planners invested the money Rice earned during his six years in the NFL, and those investments give him a limited, but a comfortable allowance. This financial freedom is what's allowed Rice to dedicate himself to helping younger football players. Quote, I made the worst split decision of my life that I'll be paying for a long time, Rice told ESPN in 2017. But one thing I don't do is try to live in that decision. I try to teach about it now and make sure that these young adults and young men, you know, never put themselves in that position. Of course, plenty of people are skeptical about whether Ray Rice has really turned his life around. And there are plenty of people who don't think domestic abusers can change. Plenty of people who will never be able to forgive him, who think all the good stuff he's done is just a ploy to get a second chance. And ultimately, only Ray Rice and the people closest to him will ever really know the truth. But all outward appearances suggest he is doing everything he possibly can to be a better man. For his part, Rice says he hates the person he used to be, absolutely hates him. He also says he understands why people are skeptical about his motives. But he says ultimately, none of that matters because he already got the only second chance that matters, the second chance from his wife. So now let's talk about the Kareem Hunt situation. In the wake of that scandal, after TMZ published the video and the Chiefs cut him from the team, a lot of people compared him to Ray Rice. Rice even said he'd be willing to speak to Hunt, mentor him, and give him advice about how to move his life forward. And underneath the surface, their situations are pretty different. What Ray Rice did was bad. What Kareem Hunt did was bad. And the way the NFL handled both were bad. Now, allow me to stand on my soapbox for a moment. And don't get me wrong, what Kareem Hunt did was incredibly stupid and immature. And even if the rumors about the woman instigating the fight are true, Hunt should have been the bigger person and walked away. And if he just walked away, he'd still be a member of the Kansas City Chiefs. But he didn't, and he has to deal with the consequences of his actions for now until the end of time. And we now live in a world where public perception is judge, jury, and execution. What Ray Rice did to his wife in that Atlantic City casino was vile and disgusting because he was the one person in the world she should have felt safe with. Kareem Hunt's actions towards the woman in the hotel was disgusting as well. He needs to look at himself in the mirror and make some major changes in his life. There should be no comparing of the situations because both situations were preventable. Protecting women in society should be at the forefront of everyone's agenda. We also need to prioritize the demonization of people who make one mistake and give them opportunities for retribution. That's an injustice to everybody. It's an injustice to Kareem Hunt because what he did was wrong, yeah. But he does deserve a chance to make things right with the victim and change his public persona. It's an injustice to Ray Rice and Janae Palmer because what they've been through, what they've overcome and what they continue to strive to overcome. We've become so enamored with vigilante justice and the power we possess on the internet that we forget that people make mistakes. And we can never grow as individuals and a society if we continue to persecute people with no intentions of rehabilitation or second chances.